Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be talking about a pulsar. Actually, not really. We're going to be talking about a pulsar planet, a planet orbiting around a pulsar, and we're also going to be visiting the smallest exoplanet ever discovered. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> Hey, welcome home! This is Earth, but we're going to be leaving home today and we're going to go on an adventure to one of the oldest exoplanets discovered, in terms of dates at least, and the exoplanet that is actually currently holds the record for being the smallest planet we know of in our universe. Not only exoplanet wise, but actually it's even less massive than anything we have in our own solar system. It's even smaller than Mercury. This is an object that has a very interesting history and a very interesting name. But let's actually start by going into the constellation of Virgo and looking for an object right there about 1200 light years away from us. An object known as Draugr, also known as PSR B1257 plus 12B. So we're going to jump to it right away without further ado and here we go. This right here, ladies and gentlemen, is the least massive planet we've discovered so far. An object discovered back in 1994 using what's known as pulsar timing technique. Let me just get here first so I can actually explain it to you. First of all, look at how awesome it looks. It is actually gorgeous. Mostly because it's illuminated by the neutron star, the pulsar, right there, known as Lich. Now, all of the objects in this solar system, in this star system, actually have very unusual names. Actually, not just unusual, they have really cool names. So, this is Lich. Lich is actually, I believe, some sort of a undead wizard, magician type that basically was a powerful wizard that when they died, they would turn into these um, undead zombie-like creatures that have magic. And this is what the star is, uh, is named after. And then this star also has three more exoplanets around it. Except for Draugr, there's also Poltergeist and Phobitor. I've discussed these objects in one of the older videos on this channel, but today I really want to focus on this beautiful object right here. So Draugr is actually super, super small. It is about only twice the mass of our moon, and it's about half the mass of Mercury, about the eighth of the mass of Mars, and it's basically, in terms of planetary terms at least, very, very small. We've discovered it simply because uh, discovering planets around pulsars is actually not very difficult. So how do we actually find it? Let me actually zoom out of here and I'll show you. I'll try to demonstrate it by looking at the star and looking at the planet as well. So hopefully this will be a good enough demonstration. So right now we're going to be look at this uh, beautiful neutron star as one of the planets orbits around it. As we're looking at the pulsar, we're actually receiving its pulses, but because this planet uh, actually influences the neutron star gravitationally, every time we receive a pulsar, or uh, every time we receive a pulse from the pulsar, we actually see it slightly differently. It actually changes just a little bit. And because of these uh, differences in pulses, we can actually estimate and relatively accurately calculate the uh, location and, of course, the orbit of each planet. And so this way, we were able to discover all three of these planets. And we actually used to think there were four, and even a smaller and le less massive planet around this system, but then we realized it was very likely just a statistical anomaly. And so now we think there's only three here. Now, there are obviously other uh, planets we found around other pulsars, but unusually, this seems to have not one, not two, but three planets. It's the only system we've discovered so far uh, that has a pulsar and three planetary objects. The other two are a little bit uh, more massive than Earth and obviously a little bit bigger than Earth, but this one here is the least massive of them all. 
Now we're going to go and land here and just see what it all looks like from the surface of this beautiful planet. And we're going to explore the surface features here as well. And one thing you actually have to realize is how these planets were created. So for pulsars, there's usually three ways they can acquire planets. One of them is if the planet is captured from the outside. This usually means uh, it has to be a planet that somehow approaches the neutron star relatively close and gets captured by its gravitational interaction. The second way is usually through um, one of the planets being very, very massive and essentially, uh, because of its mass, surviving the actual uh, supernova when it occurs because neutron stars are made through supernova and when a supernova happens usually they actually destroy every single planet in the solar system luckily for us our sun will never experience a supernova so we don't have to worry about that but uh, in the, the neutron star systems in pulsar systems when a supernova occurs it very likely destroys everything. And so a very, very massive planet might survive and leave a little bit of a remainder behind. And so this sometimes happens and we found at least one other exoplanet that may actually have been created using this method. But these three planets have been created very, very differently. We think that they were actually created because this star used to have a partner. And when it went supernova, it stripped its partner completely and it basically destroyed its partner and what was left were these kind of unusual particles orbiting around the star. And with time these particles accumulated and combined into three planets that we've discovered. And so we think that this material right here is actually the leftover from the star companion that used to orbit around Lich. And so now we have these three planets that are basically leftovers of its partner star. Now, and if you ever wondered why these planets have such an unusual name, it's actually because back in July of 2014, the International Astronomical Unit launched a very interesting campaign asking people to help name various objects. And so using a voting system, people decided that these objects here would have to have these unusual mystical and somewhat scary names from Norse mythology and I guess from fantasy books as well. So this is how these planets got these names and I believe Draugr is a type of uh, undead creature in Norse mythology. And so, well, that's really all there is to say about these unusual planets in this particular system. But most importantly, this right here makes this the smallest planet we know of so far. Maybe one day we'll get to visit it, and maybe one day we'll even get to explore other pulsars, but for now, that's all we can do. We can imagine what it might look like, we can potentially use Space Engine to stand on its surface in its very unusual, very scary looking environment, and then look up into the skies and see the unusual formations in the skies, the very different look of the Milky Way as we've never seen it before, and maybe even our own beautiful star, the Sun, with our own beautiful Earth somewhere, oh, I guess it's on the other side, somewhere over there behind these mountains on the beautiful planet Joker. So somewhere in this direction is our beautiful Sun and of course our beautiful Earth. And well, anyway, that's all I really wanted to talk about in this video and I wanted to kind of introduce the smallest planet we've discovered so far, at least by mass. And there is a beautiful planet Earth. Thank you so much for watching, come back tomorrow to learn something else and subscribe to this channel if you still haven't, share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and most importantly, consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me grow the channel and make better and better videos every time. I'll see you guys tomorrow. There is our Earth climbing across the sky from this beautiful system of Lich. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.